Hey YouTube, Repo Man 64. I found a few more um, connections to 153. As you know, 153 is the amount of fish that they drew towards the boat, but they couldn't get into the boat, so they had to drag it to shore. Imagine you're out all night. Just put your. I, I, is there a fisherman out there? I'm not really a fisherman. I have fish, but I'm not really a fisherman. These people that fish are so deep into fishing that, that they have all this equipment and they know what time to go and they know based on the tug of the line what kind of fish they possibly have on the end of the line. Um, they're just they're avid fishermen. They're anglers. They they really know how to fish. And so you're on a boat and you've been out there all night long fishing and you're coming to shore and there's this guy on the shore. They don't recognize him at first, but then they do. And he says, hey, cast your net on the right side of the boat instead of the left. And they're like, the right side of the boat's eight foot away. What difference does that make? You know, um, it's like. It always amazed me when I did go out fishing in a boat, people would cast, and I don't know why, so you'll probably get in the comments section and tell me why, but they take their line and they cast that line so far out, and I'm like, why don't you just drop it straight down? What's the difference between here and 30 feet over there? You're in the middle of the water anyway, just drop the line straight down. And you have a lot less. Maybe it's the adventure of bringing the fish in and the work involved in it. I'm not sure. But I'm probably a lazy fisherman. I would just drop the line straight down beside the boat and bring it back up. And the fish would either be near me or 30 feet away. It wouldn't really make a difference. So you're in the boat. They're in the boat. And this guy says, cast your net on the right side of the boat, just eight foot away. Because I don't know how wide the boat is. Probably eight foot, ten foot. Just cast it on the other side. And... How amazed were they when that net was just slapped full of fish, big fish, so big they couldn't, they just couldn't even bring it into the boat. It would have capsized the boat. They had to drag it to shore. So that story is very important because there were 153 fish. So I decided to go down the timeline that I've made and see how many 153 uh, day relationships there were on the timeline. And of course, anytime I find something, I want to bring it to you and share it. Uh, some of your comments really lead me in awesome directions as to finding other connections. And then some comments are, we're going to go through the tribulation and there is no rapture. Uh, we're all going to go through it. Yes, you are. <laughs> yes, you are. That's why you're saying that. Uh, you're a part of that group that can't see the rapture. You can't see anything up until seal six and some of you can't even see anything up until the end of the seven year tribulation and that's because that's the group you're in and yes that's what you can see i see a rapture of the bride before any seals are opened um and i'll show you that to you as well so let's get into the pictures and study this for a second i got this again these comments are fantastic i love them this person did a study watchwoman 417 did a study uh, on the word apostasia. Remember, um, in, I think it's, I'll, I'll, I have the verse in here in Second Thessalonians, it says that you, we are not leaving until this apostasia takes place and the man of sin is being revealed. It's very clear. And so many times as the bride, we've split that verse in half to say, well, it's kind of true. Uh, we are the apostasy, we're the departure, and then the man of sin will be revealed. But this verse is not talking to us. It's talking to the saints of the tribulation, those that go in seal six. First Thessalonians is talking to us, and I'll show you the uh, stark contrast between the two verses. But Watchwoman 417 sends this to me, and she shows me the actual translation of the word apostasia in every single Bible. They are all departing first. There will be a departure first, not a departure from the church, a rapture event. Every single Christian, every believer, everyone that is covered in the, uh, the blood of Christ, now, like I say, once that blood gets on you, you can't get it off. It does not come off. It's stuck to you forever. 
once you're marked, you're marked, and you, you you can't do anything to lose it. You won't do anything to lose it. An actual true believer simply will experience a change um, in their hearts, and uh, what they once desired will now become a filth to them. They won't want to do it. Uh, sometimes it takes quite a while, and sometimes it actually happens overnight where everything changes, and they feel it, and they sense it. So... This departure first. You can see every translation, Jerome's Latin Vulgate, departure first. Wycliffe Bible, departure first. Tyndale Bible, departure first. All the way down to King James, where they call it a falling away. It is, I believe, according to this here, I don't know if there's other uh, translations in other Bibles that call it a falling away, but I believe the King James is the only Bible that calls it a falling away. It's actually a departure, a departing first. Yes, that keeps happening, and that keeps happening. Okay, the flood, it happened on Halloween. It probably began at nightfall on October the 30th, because a lot of things that I'm noticing are pointing to October 30th, but at nightfall in Israel, it becomes October 31st. Um, God will, just like he did, I, I, I've heard some some discussions on exactly how long Jesus went in the grave. Uh, I thought we hammered this out very clearly. He went to the cross on Wednesday. The entire week was a Sabbath, and it was not over until Sunday. He spent Wednesday night, Thursday night, and Friday night in the grave. Wednesday, when he died on the cross at 3 p.m., did not count because it was not a full day. God was going to show us that he would begin a thing, complete a thing, and then end a thing. There's three things that happen. He began a thing when he died on the cross. He showed it three days and three nights in the grave, and then he finished it when he rose from the grave. He rose from the grave on the first day of the week. He did this at some time that night. That night, you can't split it in half and say, well, I mean, he spent some of that night, so that's a day. It's not a day. That night is not a day. So he spent 72 hours in the grave. He would have fulfilled it 100% to the moment, and he would have encompassed it to make sure that we understood that even though it was 3 o'clock in the afternoon when he died, and at some point in the night before the women showed up at the tomb, before sunrise, he wasn't in the grave. He wasn't in the tomb. So Nobody knows exactly what time he got up. Could have been, who knows, 9 p.m. that night. Who, who knows what time he got up. But he did not complete the night. So from October 31st, Halloween, this is the day the flood begins. This is also the day that Adam sinned. From that moment all the way up to uh, April the 2nd is when Jesus rises he rises, he completes April the 2nd, he rises at some point after nightfall on April the 2nd, being April the 3rd, which is the first day of the week, which we call Sunday. Anytime I call a day, it does not necessarily mean that April the 3rd would be a Sunday. It is what we call a Sunday, but it is the first day of the week. So 153 days there. Now, from May 30th, let me look on my trusty timeline. May 30th, Savon 15, the day that Jesus ascended. The day that Moses went up into the mountain and sat there and waited for seven days for God to come to him, to give him the law. From that day to October 30th at nightfall, which completes it, October the 31st, is 153 days. 153 days from ascension to when the flood begins. July 24th, this is Tisha B'Av. This is the day that two temples were destroyed in history in Israel. The temple was taken away, which is a very high watch day for us. It is Pentecost, and it would be a Sunday, the first day. This is the day the, day the raven and the doves were released. And I'll show that to you in a minute. 153 days to December 24th. Jesus was born. I'm sorry, I said that last video so many times and I, and I made a mistake. This is the day Jesus was conceived, not born. He was conceived on December the 25th. Sometime on December the 24th, 
as it became nightfall in Israel, Jesus was born in the evening of December the 24th, becoming the December the 25th. I said it again. Conceived. <laughs> Jesus was conceived. That's been hashed into my brain for almost 59 years, and, and it's hard to, to break those habits. Um, but don't believe for a second that God is going to allow us to celebrate the day Jesus came from heaven and gave up his earthly I mean, his uh, heavenly uh, reign to come down here to our earthly, you know, habitation is stuck in time, stuck in the womb uh, for nine months uh, to be born. Don't think that that day would go unnoticed. We have been celebrating December the 25th as the day he was born, but it is actually the day that he was conceived. That's the day he left heaven and came here and spent nine months in the womb, not just nine months exactly nine months, exactly 40 weeks, 280 days, the perfect gestation period of a baby. That's July 24th. Now that is from Tisha B'Av. This is July 31st. This is to B'Av. It's a very celebratory day. It's a day of wedding. It's a day they would go out in the field and pick a bride. It's a very high watch day as well. December the 31st is the day that John left in the womb when Mary went to visit her cousin Elizabeth. It is exactly 153 days. So I find all these 153-day relationships. How does this happen? How does this continue to happen on the timeline? It can only happen if you uh, adhere to the 364-day-a-year calendar. It will only work. I thought about uh, Isaiah 53 and his YouTube channel when I saw this. I thought it was pretty cool. Um, rapture just ahead. We tried to tell you, but you wouldn't listen. We tried to show you, but you refused to see. Sent you Bible verses, but you refused to read. Sent you articles, but you refused to read. Sent you videos, but you refused to watch. You deleted, ignored, unfriended, mocked, blocked, sorry, read that backwards, scoffed, and belittled the messenger. But the biggest mistake made in life is thinking we had more time. We have no more time. If I could hammer this concept home to everyone, and I have mentioned it in my last video, like Gigi said, she kind of set me straight. I do look at high watch days, and I do look forward to them. But literally, any second, we could be standing in heaven in total shock that it happened at that moment literally any second. There is nothing stopping this rapture from occurring whenever God decides to. As a matter of fact, he makes a comment that it'll be sooner than you think. Even though you think it delays, it doesn't. It's actually going to happen sooner than you think. So it might be that we're all looking at a very high watch day, and it occurs a couple of days earlier, which is lines up with the Bible. It has to line up with the Bible. Anything that I say um, on any of this timeline it must line up with the Bible. Jesus would have had four events, and you cannot ignore them. You can't say, well, I think this or I think that. You have to align all four events with events that happened in the Bible. It must be there. Jesus, In order for uh, Jesus to be born on a certain day, he would have had to have been conceived on a certain day, and would have had to land on an important day. And God does something beautiful. He's joined the Gregorian calendar with the with the uh, Hebrew timeline, the Hebrew calendar, perfectly when he had Mary conceive on Christmas Day, when John left in the womb on New Year's Day, when Jesus was born. Now we're going back to their calendar. This is ours. We're going back to theirs. Jesus was born on Tabernacles. He comes to Tabernacle with us. This is Tishri 15, September the 29th. I know that's also accurate because we got a sign in heaven. Forty days later, we saw the... Uh, Moon, blood moon, turned white as it eclipsed Uranus, which is an incredible uh, sign that that happened on November the 8th, exactly 40 days. Jesus, in order to be circumcised and named, we would have to find a feast that's eight days long. If somebody brought it to my attention, you're accurate, that uh, Hanukkah is an eight-day feast as well, and I actually have it on the timeline. But if I started Hanukkah, then I don't land on his birth being of any significant day. So it must start somewhere on a significant day. It must be that the, the egg 
travels down the uterine tube and attaches to the wall after seven days. You can look it up. It's, it's a fact. That's what happens. And John leapt in the womb. When did Jesus, when did this baby become life? The moment of conception. Anybody tries to, to discredit a baby and calls it a fetus and it is anything other than a human life that they're terminating is absolutely categorically wrong. And we've all sinned so badly. Oh my goodness, have we sinned so badly. But it, there is somebody who came and he takes that sin and he washes it with his blood and you're covered and I don't care what you do you're not getting that off that's a permanent marker that's going to be on there for a few days but it's not the blood of Christ but it's a representation it's going to be stuck on you forever you can't get it off it doesn't come off it doesn't wipe off this did a little bit it's on my fingers now um but you get my 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 point. Uh, people that say, "Well, you have to continue to be good. If you don't do this, you don't do that." The evidence of somebody who thinks they're saved is somebody who pridefully came and says, "Okay, I accept you," and then walks away. That's pride. Somebody who comes humbly, brokenhearted, and says, "I don't stand a chance without you. I don't stand a chance. I'm going to the lake of fire if you don't cover me, Lord. Please, I'm begging you. I don't deserve it." There is nothing I've ever done to warrant it. And the second you save me, I will do everything in my power to warn everyone else that this is a, a, that this is necessary in order to go to heaven. Is only a work because of what's brewing in your heart, not because you're showing off for anybody. So let me get back to uh, the pictures here. All right, we continue. Type in, if you have an iPhone, I don't know if this works on Android or not, but if you have an iPhone and you type in, I, I enlarged it. If you type the word calendar in to your phone, this pops up as an emoji. And this is the date that always pops up. And I've heard so many, over the past three or four years, I've heard so many people looking at this date because... Of one reason or another, mathematics that they did, and July 17th always seems to pop up. And I'm like, it doesn't mean anything to me. It doesn't land on my timeline. But I was wrong. It actually does land on the timeline. And this is a recent find that I made, thanks to Dr. Barry and his studies. Um, I didn't realize the timeline as to when Moses threw the tablets down. Moses threw the tablets down the night of. Remember when he shows up, it's nightfall. He comes down off the mountain on July 16th and on July 17th at nightfall, after dark, he throws those tablets down and uh, grinds up the calf and makes them drink of it. And I think they killed 3,000 that uh, refused to follow God at that point. But isn't it amazing that uh, this date shows up? If you, you can go to it right now on your phone. I don't know if, it, like I said, I don't know if it works on Android or not, but it does on, on uh, iPhone. If you type in the word calendar, as you're messaging, messengering somebody, um, you'll get an emoji. And I get three emojis, and three of them show this date every single time. All right. I want to point out, I just talked about this a moment ago, First Thessalonians 4. Then we which are alive and remain, first remember the dead rise, and then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up. That's a rapture. Caught up. We're snatched out of imminent danger. We are caught up before the seals are open. We're caught up before tribulation. We will not see any of it. We will not see um, the Antichrist be revealed. We will not see any horseman ride. Nobody has. We will not see... Great famine. I don't know about you, but I'm eating pretty good every day. I need to watch my uh, diet. It's getting expensive, but the food's still available out there to everyone. There's not uh, starvation going on. So the seals are not open yet. There is starvation going on in the world. Don't get me wrong. There are people who are hungry, um, very much so. Uh, but it says all the people in Revelation, all will be uh, under this, the, the these... Uh, these seals, affected by these seals. Right now, I can promise you Donald Trump is still eating the best food the planet has to offer. 
uh, every single day. He is not suffering whatsoever. He is not hiding in a mountain somewhere uh, trying to hide his face from God. Uh, and I'm not saying that uh, he's not saved. I don't know. I'm just using him as an example because we all know who he is. Um, so caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we be ever for uh, ever be with the Lord. So we read First Thessalonians 4. We see a rapture verse around the rapture verse. We don't see much turmoil. We see problems, but we don't see a lot of turmoil around this um this uh, rapture event here. But then we go here. And remember that word caught up. We come here. And we go to 2 Thessalonians 2. And you can read the whole thing here. The man of sin. Now I want you to think about it from the perspective of the rapture has already occurred back in 1 Thessalonians. Now we're in 2 Thessalonians. And now uh, God is changing the hearts of the masses. They are not raptured. They are going to heaven. They are gathered. They are a different group of people. This group of people go in seal six. We see them in seal six very clearly. Um, they are a great multitude that no man can count. I would imagine that most of them would have been killed. They would have said the sinner's prayer just prior to whatever kind of annihilation, nuclear bomb, meteor, I mean, just earthquakes, floods, you name it. A lot of this planet is going to die, and I would imagine, I don't know about you, but if you saw a big wave coming at you, are you going to, A, run? No, you know that wave is going to get you. Are you going to pray to Satan to save you? Satan, please help me. No, you're not going to do that, because at that moment, you will be faced with your creator. You will, all of the pride you ever had. You, being a multimillionaire standing on the shore right next to a guy that's sleeping in a tent, living on the beach with no money whatsoever, you're both going to face this tidal wave. Both of you are going to die. Both of you are going to kneel down and pray. Have you ever heard of an atheist? So many stories I've heard of atheists on their deathbed at the very last second say, God, please forgive me, save me. They, you all know, everyone knows in the heart of hearts, they know they were created in the image of God and that they have value. And by that value, they know that they must pray to their creator to save them because it's the only way out. This is the great multitude that will appear in heaven in seal six. Now let's read. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him. This is a gathering. That ye be not sh uh, soon shaken in mind or be troubled neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter from us. See, there's a lot of turmoil going on right now. They're shaken in mind. They're troubled they're in their spirit by the word. They don't know the word. They've never learned it properly nor by letter from us that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come except there be that rapture we spoke about back in 1 Thessalonians and the Son of Man being revealed, the Son of Perdition. As you can see, we've been splitting this verse in half because we see a rapture event. But no, this is a gathering event. These people are going to go through some incredible turmoil, some incredible trouble. And I think personally, and I cannot find anyone yet, and I've been saying it for a couple of months now, I can't find anyone yet that will argue with me that God is going to turn his attention back to Israel for seven years. Oh, and three and a half years later, he's going to rescue a great multitude that no man can count. Halfway. He could do that, but that's not what he said. He said, I'm going to turn my attention back to Israel. There, I believe, is a second rapture just six or seven days away from the first and i found something that i want to show you that lines th with that all right let's go here let's start here like i said before at the flood the flood october 30th is a pentecost and i was confused as to why it landed one day off the flood began on october 31st and i realized that nightfall in israel it becomes the 31st i think the flood began at nightfall becoming the 31st uh, and 153 days later is the resurrection. 
we have down here, the moment he shut the arc door, I'm sorry, he opened the arc door and Noah went inside. Right now, Noah is a picture of the bride for that particular part of the story. This is the day Methuselah died. He sits in that doorway for a week, just sitting there, waiting for anyone else to come in. They did not have Jesus at that time. They had a corrupt DNA strand. They had all kinds of problems back then. No one came to that ark to, gain, to come in. They did, if you read in uh, extra biblical accounts like the Book of Jubilees, you'll find that they did show up once the ark door was shut on the 31st and the flood began. That's when they decided to show up and try to get in. And no, it was like, really, now? Now is when you want to get in? You had a whole week. I've been warning you for 120 years. You've watched me build this boat for five years. Where were you? And uh, they, uh, they only wanted in when they saw everything happen. And what does that give us a picture of? Pretty much what I just said. The rapture event's going to occur, and all this turmoil is going to happen, and so many people at that moment will drop to their knees and ask the Lord into their heart, and they will be saved. That's all you need to do. It's that simple. But pride will not allow people to do it. Pride forces people to attempt to do something on their own behalf. But when you're looking at a wave coming down on you or lava out of a mountain or a comet coming down um, to, to hit you, there is nothing, there is no pride in that moment. You drop to your knees and you throw off everything and you ask God to save you. And he does. He absolutely does. So we have that imagery here at the flood, just as in the days of Noah. And then it rains for 40 days. But it doesn't just rain for 40 days. He sits in that ark. He sits in that ark for exactly 150 days before the water begins to subside. The water must be a few feet, 50 feet, I don't know, over the highest mountain. Well, at least Mount Ararat, where he was. And when the water begins to subside, the ark rested on the seventh month and 17th day, which is the 153rd uh, third day from the day the flood begins. Excuse me, which is the day Jesus resurrected. It all surrounds around Jesus. Everything wraps back here to Jesus. 150 days. You see it up there, 150 days, the water subsides. Jesus is on the cross. After three days, the ark rested. So he was in that ark for 153 days, and finally the ark rested. But then he stays in that ark all the way up until 10 days after the flood initially began. So he was in that ark for one year and 10 days. So... This up here you can see in blue. I've highlighted them all in blue. The ark rests 153 days after the flood. Jesus rises on April the 3rd. Again, you all know that I start the year. I cannot personally see it any other way. And I'm not saying that everyone's wrong and I'm right. This is just what I see. The day of equal parts. The day Jesus said, are there not 12 hours in the day? This happens every single year. It has since the beginning of time, since God created the planet. Up until now, and I've shown you 600 years in the future, that March 16th will always be the day of 12 hours in the day and 12 hours at night. So what's our first day? The next day is our first day. Day one would be March 17th. And then from there, it's just simple math. You just simply count uh, forward, and each month has 30, 30, 31. If you use any other amount of days in a month, you will not come from the flood even if you don't even forget about the Gregorian calendar of of, uh, of October 31st, forget about that. Just use Heshvan 17 and count forward and you will land on Nissan 14 every single time. I've done that here. I showed you this last time. Heshvan 17, that's the day the flood began. When you count the 17th, which is the first day, to the end of the month of Heshvan, how many days does Heshvan have? Heshvan has 30. That's 14 days because you're counting the first day. Then there's 122 days when you count Kislev, Tibet, Shavat, and Adar. Remember, 31, 30, 30, and 31. That's 122 days. And then we know Jesus went to the cross on the 14th. That's 150 days, exactly. 
it's hard to argue that point. Some will, but it's hard to argue it. 150 days later, if you use that exact uh, amount of days in each month, so a lot of people are like, well, uh, Pentecost is here and then it's here. And I'm like, but that doesn't even add up to 50 days. How many days? <laughs> you, have a, you have a 40 day month, you have a 20 day month. I mean, how, how, how do you wind up that? You have to count. You have to count simply. You got to count uh, your days perfectly. All right. What's the next 153 uh, uh, sign here? From second Passover to the day Jesus was born, it is 153 days. I said, wow, that's cool. I've been finding all these 153-day relationships. From the day Jesus ascended, also the day Moses ascended to the mountain, 153 days to the day the flood began. 153 days exactly. Savant 15 is the day Jesus ascended. It is not Pentecost. Pentecost is when Moses was given the law. It's when God called him out of the cloud. And then Moses sat with God for 40 days and 40 nights. This is the same seven days that Noah sat in the door of the ark for seven days. And then the ark door was shut. The same exact scenario. God repeats everything over and over again. So we have this seven. It says six days, but it's seven days inclusive, including the first day and the last day. We see a lot of this uh, typology where it's where God wants to clarify the head of the week and the end of the week, like the beginning of the week and the Sabbath, or encompass the head of the, the week to the head of the week, eight days. So he does that quite a bit. So here we have Moses. He's given the law. He's up there. 40 days, and God says, you better get down. They're really messing up down there. Build a calf. They built themselves a calf, and they're worshiping it. Moses come down, and here's where we think the Holy Spirit was given to us. And the Bible says, in a few days, I will send you the comforter. And I kind of banked on that for a long time. So Moses goes up into the mountain on Pentecost. That's the day that God gave him the law. Well, uh, no, that's the day he goes up there and he waits seven days. God gives him the No, I, I, I just messed that up again. Hold on a second. Moses ascends into the mountain on Shavuot, the same day Jesus ascended. Then, seven days later, God calls him out of the cloud and gives him the law and gives it to him for 40 days and 40 nights. And he says, go down. He comes down out of the mountain. And this is where it surprised me. I didn't realize this. I did the math. And the first of all is the day that Moses comes down. But he doesn't give them the law. He breaks it. He throws down the tablets. He does this on July 16th at nightfall, becoming July 17th. So when I see that Google uh, thing come up, that emoji come up, I'm shocked. I'm actually shocked that it's the same date that we've been, been being pointed to. Now that is just, what is that, seven days away, eight days away, eight days from now at nightfall. That's a... Uh, that's a high wash day. Again, like Gigi said, it could happen any second, but these are just high wash days. Not thus saith the Lord. I'm not saying God came to me and said that's the day, but it is certainly a day to, to pay attention to every single day, but there's something to look forward to. And looking forward to, to anything is a uh, spice of life. It's, it's exciting. We, we're, we're studying this stuff. We're learning. We're trying to figure it out. And it's, it's fun to try to, to try to, uh, figure out when he's coming back. It's, it's our dream. It's what we look forward to. It's what we want more than anything is for him to come back and, and rapture us out of here. The first of all, July 17th, let's say, Moses breaks the law, the tablets. Remember now, you'll read the story. Um, he goes outside the camp and he waits by the tabernacle of the Lord. And after two days, the Lord says, cut you out a couple of stones. You know, that took a moment. Come back up here. I will give you the law again, and then you can take it down to them. And he does this on the 9th of all. He brings the law down. The actual law was not delivered the first time because he broke the tablets. It was actually delivered the second time when Pentecost had fully came. Pentecost came, but it fully came when he delivered the law. And this might also be the day the Holy Spirit was given. I, I'm not... 100% sure when the Holy Spirit was it given on the first Pentecost or the second Pentecost. I, I can't quite determine that yet. But I do know that the tablets were brought down on 
the uh, second Pentecost, the ninth of Av, Tisha B'Av. So that's a high watch day. But then we have this seven days. Seven days after that is to be off. This is the wedding that uh, the, the women would go out into the field and they would be picked by a, a man to be their wife. It's a celebratory day for the Jews. It's the day they realized they were not going to die in the graves each night. This is also the day the dove returns with the olive branch. It's a very happy day to be off. This is the day the dove returns again with the olive branch. It is also... Let me back up to Second Pentecost. It is also, Second Pentecost is also 153 days to December the 25th when Jesus was conceived. From to be off, it is 153 days to John leaping in the womb. So all these 153 days. And I keep, this seven days keeps popping up. So is it the rapture could occur on July 17th, on July 24th, on July 30th. The the best high watch day personally I have is July 24th. This is the 9th of Av. And seven days later is to be Av, which would be perfect, a perfect gathering day where all the women were gathered out in the field to be picked of as a bride. So... And that's all my 153s that I found so far. I think that was, was that four or five of them? Five of them. Five of them in total that I have found so far. I'm still doing, uh, doing math to see if anything else works out. But again, I think the rapture will occur. And I think seven days later, we will see this great multitude in heaven. Uh, it's going to be quite the event. Oops, I messed up. It's going to be quite the event that takes place. All right. That keeps happening, and that keeps happening, and that happened twice on the same day, morning and night. All right. After this, I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. This is the rapture. You'll read this in Revelation 4. This is not just talking to John. This is talking to us. This is what happens. A door will be opened. And the first voice which I heard as uh, was, as it were, of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither. And I will show thee things which must be hereafter. So there's a group that's being taken up there. John's being taken up there. Now remember, I think John's taken up there immediately after us. And the reason I say that is because he actually sees us there already when he gets there. And when we get there, we're going to this award ceremony where we're given crowns and everything. And John actually sees us casting these crowns. So we would have already had to have been there prior to him. This door is open, I believe, for seven days. This is Revelation 5. Thou art worthy to take the book and open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by the blood of every kindred and every tongue and every nation, and hast made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on earth. All right. That's us. That is us witnessing the first seal being opened. And who is us? Does this 24 elders represent all of the redeemed uh, to God? And it has God redeemed uh, and has redeemed us to God by the blood of every kindred, every tongue, and people, and nation. Could 24 people encompass that? No, they are our leaders. They are probably the 12 apostles and the Old Testament uh, 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 leaders, uh, all of them together come up to 24. And, uh, but they are the heads of us, uh, and we're, we're the bride, and we're there with them. So uh, 24 could, po could not possibly, you couldn't pick 24 people on the face of the earth right now to encompass every tribe, every kindred, every people, and every tongue, and every nation. You just you couldn't do it. It's not possible. So this is us. Very clearly, this is us. And this is what most people miss, but this is what they see here. And after this, after what? After that great multitude before of every tribe and every nation, everything, after that, after this, I beheld, and lo, a great multitude 
this is now a great multitude. This is a huge group of people, which no man could number of all nations. Here's that all now. You can cover it, right? You can cover it back there with the bride being more than 24, and you can cover it here as well with a great multitude. What do you think is going to happen the second they see this rapture? Because they're going to see this rapture. They're going to see the man of sin revealed. They're going to see six seals being opened. And after this, I beheld and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number of all nations and kindred and people and tongues stood before the throne, before the Lamb, clothed in white robes and palm branches, in their hands. <clears throat> Who are these people? They're a great multitude. But I thought narrow was the way and few will find it. Oh, that's for the bride. That is not for the great multitude. The great multitude is also taken to heaven. They are gathered to heaven. They are not raptured out of this nightmare that's about to ensue. They are gathered. They are taken out just the bride is taken out just prior to all these things that happen, which is why I seriously think it's six or seven days. We see this seven-day typology with an arc door being opened. We see this seven-day typology from the nightmare that happens to them on uh, July 24th, the 9th of Av, where the temple is taken away. And oh, seven days later, it's a glorious day. They are witnessing a wedding. So... Let me continue reading. And cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne and upon the Lamb. And all the angels stood around about the throne and about the elders, there's us, and the four beasts, and fell before the throne on their faces and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing, and glory, and wisdom, and thanksgiving, and honor, and power, and might. Be to our God forever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders saying unto me, What are these which that which are arrayed in white robes? And where did they come from? And John's like, I don't have a clue. You're from here. You tell me. Now, the, remember, this is one of the elders. This is one of us. This is a bride. And he's asking John, Who are these people in white robes? And John says, I don't know. I, you know. And he said, they are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes. They came out of tribulation. They probably died directly after the bride was taken. There was so much turmoil going on. And they were taken out and they washed their robes and made them white. This is the great multitude is are the saints of the tribulation. Oh, and I, I guess I didn't have to read to the bottom. Um, and it explains who they are. They washed them white in the blood of the Lamb. So they accepted the Lord after the rapture occurred. I thought this was interesting on 717. I'm not, not much into Stellarium, but notice the moon is concealed by the sun. And it's in Gemini. This is where the sun was on March 16th. Uh, 4,000, or sorry, 6,000 years ago when God created everything. This is where he placed the sun. God together with man in heaven, or on earth, I mean. Uh, this is a, a Gemini is a picture of God and man. The, uh, how do you call the, uh, the one who could die as opposed to the one who couldn't die. Uh, what do you call that? Uh, one was eternal and one was not eternal. So they were together here, and this was that creation. And then, of course, Adam sinned, and the sun moved into the horns of the bull where the flood began. So, yay, I got through all that. I just want to bring to you the 153 days that keeps popping up all over the place. I had, I was floored. I'll tell you what, just a couple of years ago now, I was floored when I did the math from the flood. I discovered the flood was on October the 31st. They were saying it on Google quite a bit, and it had to happen around here. A lot of the watchers will hold to a date, and then suddenly they'll say, oh, no, October 31st is the day of the flood. But somehow they jump a month forward or a month backward to bring it back to this. And as soon as the date passed, they were back onto their calendar. Not saying anything bad, but calendar doesn't move. You look up, the sun comes up every day, it goes down every day. That's a day. You have to count it and you have to assign something to that day. You can't pretend like it didn't exist. You can't use the moon because then you'd have 354 days in a year and we'd have to pretend like 15 days just disappeared. Can't do it. It's got to 
be somewhere. You have to be able to explain it, and you have to be able to use Bible verses to do it. You can't just say, well, you know, this is the day it started because this lines up and that lines up. But Jesus said, are there not 12 hours in the day? This is the day Lazarus died. There is only one day that does that in the spring, and that's March 16th. There is no other day, and it has always been March 16th. Even though we have the procession of the sun, sun moves to the left as we view it, but it ticks like a second hand to the right, and the story of God is clearly written in the heavens uh, when you view the procession of the sun from March 16th in the year. Um, and by the way, if you don't use March 16th, the sun will not be, if you use any other day, if you go to March 23rd or even go off into May or whatever month you want to use for the head of your year, you will not have the sun going through um, Aquarius during the thousand year millennium. And that is very clear that it goes through Aquarius, the water of Aquarius, uh, Aquarius during that thousand year millennium. It won't do that if you choose any other date than March the uh, 16th as the last Sabbath. This year, the Sabbaths fall on a Thursday. Next year, the Sabbaths will fall on a Saturday. Um, 2023. I had a dream about that. I wonder if I can remember that. The, uh, the 2023 came up. 2023. I don't remember what it was. I woke up. I was like, I got to write this down. <laughs> because it was literally... It was literally in the Bible showing that 2023 was the year. I'll have to I'll have to remember that, and uh, I should have wrote that down. I woke up this morning going, I, I'm, I'll remember that, because it was pretty profound. <laughs> now I'm just at a loss. Sorry about that. That's not cool at all. You're all hanging on the edge of your seat. It it literally it, it literally came into play. 2030, 20 days and 30 days. What was that? No, it's 20 days and 23 days. I don't know. I'll find it. I'll figure it out, and I'll bring it back to my next video, if we're still here. Because, again, it could happen in any second, not based on my date, not based on anyone's date, nobody's calculations, nobody's anything. It's all based on God's date, and he wrote this date down before he ever created anything. He knew the end from the beginning. He knows this date. Though it seemed to tarry, it doesn't tarry. I know you think it does. I know it's taking forever. I know you think that uh, that it's just never going to happen. I mean, I'm not saying that you think that, but some people do. I know you. sometimes you get to the edge and you just can't wait any longer. And you're just like, we figured and we figured and we're going over the same site. I found so much more this year than I did last year, by the way. This this 153-day thing has just popped out on, uh, on me this year. I didn't see this. Well, I, I knew about the 153 days after the flood, but I, I thought that was it. But no, this uh, all this stuff is just popping out now. And you're just sitting there and you're just like, at the end of your rope, hang in there, hang in there. It's going to happen. That's the thing. It is going to happen. It's written. It is going to happen. Just hang in there. Um, it's so it's so hard uh, to, to I, I wish I could give you, I wish I could hand it to you. The, the inspiration, uh, the Holy Spirit that comes in, I think in every single uh, watcher, not just YouTubers, but every single watcher that's just sitting there and then suddenly this wash over feeling of what God said, though it appeared to tarry, it doesn't tarry. Though you think it does, it really doesn't because that date was set. Nothing's holding him back. He's not waiting for something. He's not waiting for that last person. He didn't set, he set that date based on his knowledge which is uh, eternal. He's not sitting there chewing his nails, waiting, oh, oh man, I wish this one last person would accept me so that I could come back. He's not doing that. The date was set. It's done. We are just trying to figure it out, and it's exciting. And I can promise you, as we get closer to the last, the very, very end, God's going to re be revealing so much more to so many more of you. And I wait for that, honestly, in the comments section. I wait for that for you to come into Discord and enlighten me to different things. Um, I just wait for all of us to well, work together on this to try to figure it out. And it's just amazing. It's been an amazing ride for me. I mean, doing this is not easy. Um, I do this because I'm hoping, m not about the date. I don't even care. All this research that I've done, it doesn't even matter. I'm hoping that one of you 
Well, go to that quiet place by yourself. Nobody needs to know, and you don't need to tell anybody. And accept the Lord into your heart. And um, after that, share it so that you can bring somebody else into the kingdom as well. But we'll go on the right day. It won't delay. And it's going to be here sooner than you thought. And it's going to happen. And it's going to happen in, in, in such a flash. You'll be standing here, and then you'll be standing there. And wow, just that's going to be incredible. And then we get to start our lives. We haven't begun our life yet. This is nothing. We're about to start our lives, and it's going to be incredible. It's going to be a, it's going to be something else. So, anyway, like, comment, share, and subscribe, so we can get this types of videos out to everybody. Make it through this rapture into the tribulation, so that they can be looking forward to uh, their time, their gathering. And uh, we'll chat with you again later if I find anything else, which it's like coming in like a flood lately. Uh, I'll bring it to you. Amen. Repo Man 64, signing off. Till the next time.